Welcome back to Agate Designs, I'm James, and today is going to be part two of the wood lathe project, which is our Glaswegian made Meteor. Just to recap, in the previous one we are having a bit of issues to getting the spindle out. Um, in this episode we're going to be continuing with that and probably starting on the restoration. So, um, yeah, stick around, keep watching, uh, see what your thoughts are, and uh, let's see where we get to today. heating up this outer shaft here just heating up the outer shaft rotating this round gradually and it's going to expand this section here the uh, the pulley and then hopefully we can uh, we can tap on it and it's going to cause well, it's not going to damage anything Okay, well, I'm super happy with this. Um, I managed to get everything off, and I'm just going to prove to you. It looked a bit aggressive on the video, but using the nylon mallet, I have not damaged any threads. Everything's all good. The only thing I have probably damaged is my rubber mallet a little bit on the faces, but this is three quid for a camping hammer, so it's worth having one there. But the shaft is in good condition. Um, and we've managed to get it out, which is great. Uh, how to get the bearings out next, that's gonna be the next challenge, um, as we're not actually able to get in anywhere um, to, to pull these out. Uh, but I have got a small bearing puller um, that might that might be a good option for us here. So let's, uh, let's take a breather and go from there. Yeah, might not need any uh, paint stripper with this one. I need to get myself a lead testing kit, really. But we'll uh, we'll try scraping off the majority of this, and uh, and then we'll go outside. Why wheel everything? Probably not going to record that. It's a little bit boring. The inside is where the where the more challenge is going to be. Uh, but the paint does look pretty thin on the inside, which is good. Um, so I'm probably not going to record me just grinding everything and taking all the paint off because that's pretty boring. Uh, although this is really satisfying. Hey. 
Okay, the only reason why I'm going to be clearing these up... Ah, oh, they're actually different, I think. One smaller than the other. Great! The only reason why I'm cleaning these up is I've got to go, when we pass the coronavirus, to a bearing supplier and see if I can get any of these. Uh, I'm hoping we are, but if not, we'll, we can always um, bore these out slightly um, and refit some different bearings in. Uh, I could do with speaking to someone a little bit more knowledgeable on bearings um, because obviously this time the, I don't know if they've had sealed bearings back in the late 40s, 50s sort of era so it might be better if we put some sealed bearings in here um, whatever's going to be best for the, the longevity the reality is, is that a wood lathe is never going to be used for well mine isn't, is, is going to be used for a massive long period of time this might have been used in a you know in a production environment where you know it was needed to um, to keep going every day um, so maybe seal bearings would be a little bit of a better option it would keep any dust from getting in there from the from the spindle not that I think it would kind of get any in but it may be it may be worth worthwhile doing that The sound, they don't sound great, but they move, they do move well. So if worse comes to worse, we might have to refit these after a after a good clean up. But no, no, I can feel a bit of movement in there. That's that's not acceptable. Okay, so I've just rang up my local engineering supplies, which is about three miles down the road from where I live. Uh, asked them if they're open, they are. They've put in uh, coronavirus measures, uh, no cash, etc., uh, social distancing. And I said, you know, am I, am I allowed to kind of come in? Um, and they went, yeah, yeah, please do. Uh, you know, they need the business. So admittedly, this isn't an essential trip. Uh, but it's kind of that fine line of, of uh, supporting local businesses. So anyway, uh, I read the number on the side. One is a FAG bearing. I won't say the word as it should be said. Uh, it's a German made bearing. And the other one is a British made bearing, which would suggest that this has been opened before and the bearings have been replaced. So uh, I'm going down the road. It's gonna be about 40 quid to replace the bearings, but the job is done. Uh, I did ask, should these style of bearings be oiled or greased? And I admit I am incorrect. They should be greased. Um, so, which is super exciting that I'm going to have a full replacement bearings today, fingers crossed, uh, and we're all sorted, which is super exciting. So I'm, I'm super happy about that. So let's get them done. Let's get them shopped in and, uh, hopefully we can get it done and dusted this weekend, which is great. Okay, we are back in the workshop now and under a little bit of closer inspection the, this was a German made bearing and this was a British made bearing um, what I believe is this this is the front one which is always the one to collapse because it's taking the, the most amount of force so I think this was probably replaced in the past um, I did ask them should these be greased or oiled and I was incorrect these should be greased so everything should be re-greased didn't know that um it's the cynical man within me um so the new bearings i got this wasn't cheap my requirements going into the local company was if i'm going to be buying locally i want to be buying um you know a good quality bearing so these are part of the nsk group very well known rhp bearings this is a british made bearing uh, and then I've got another one that he had in stock and this is a Japanese bearing so uh, you know if you're going to restore something I could have got these for half the price on eBay um, the quality wasn't guaranteed uh, I bought everything from George Lodge and I got a free mug because uh, I spent a certain amount with them 
Uh, and I've got to say, these guys were absolutely fantastic with me. They really appreciated the business, especially in these times. Um, you know, and to be honest, it was a good feeling, um, you know, leaving that, that place. And, you know, it went locally. You know, the British made bearing, um, the Japanese made bearing, you know, especially in certain times, I'd rather pay that extra, you know, 15, 20% more, you know, just to get these locally than, than buying it online and not knowing its source. Rant over. Um, the next point that he had, the only one that he had to match this size, um, uh, which was, I think, inch and an eighth, um, I need to 100% double check that. Uh, but the only ones that he had in that particular size were sealed ones. And he says it's not a problem. I'm not a bearing expert. Uh, but he did say if you needed to, you can knock these caps off. These are already pre-packed with grease. Um, and, you know, I didn't need to do that. Uh, so I'm just going to leave this one sealed. I couldn't get a, a sealed one for the back. This is the only open style that he had. But that's not a problem. So why did I replace these? I don't know if you can hear that. Um, that's there's a bit of a clunk. Um, they're not they're not in bad condition. I've cleaned these up and they are rolling okay. This one is really bad because um, it's it, you can hear a clunk. I don't know if you'll be able to hear that okay. Uh, but anyway, the replaced, um, you know, subject to there being no failures, these will last for another, you know, probably 30, 50 years, depending on your use, of course. But uh, I know that this job is done now. It is a bit of a pain, but that's what it is. Um, I haven't got a bearing seater kit, which looks like one of these. Haven't got one of those. So I'm just going to kind of do it uh, with a socket and then tap it in gently. And it's just standard grease for these, is what I'm told. So, uh, is it LM2 grease or whatever it's called? And just, you know, kind of pre pack everything. Whilst well, I was there, I've bought one of these, which is a poly disc, and it's just for removing paint and stripper, etc., without kind of damaging the, the steel surfaces. I'm not going to use this on the top of the beds, um, but the side um, and around the headstock, etc., I think this will be quite nice. So, um, we're going to start, we might as well just start restoring this and put the belt on when everything's done it's not an overly complicated machine you know it's a belt with a pulley with two bearings and it is effectively a wood lathe um <clears throat> there's there's not a lot to it the important thing is if you are going to buy one um especially on some of the you know the chinese ones is put a, a center in the tailstock and if you can a center in the where the chuck would usually go line those up and see if they are in line um in line you'll know what i mean when you go and have a look at it if they're slightly off or you can wear a headstock out you can create like a boat bottom i think it's called um where you can wear out the the, the front and the back when you're constantly moving it you can actually create a bit of a um a mark on there and when you've got that it starts to vibrate and yeah it's not very good so little things like that is is something to look out for so I did want to just show you a few little shots before I take this uh, to my grinding area and start removing the paint. I'm not going to do this on camera. Uh, I need to get this job done quickly. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I've shown you what I'm going to use. You don't need to watch me doing that because, uh, yeah, it's probably already a bit boring anyway. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to plow ahead with this. I'll probably degrease it a little bit um, to avoid getting you know loads of grease on here because it just flies it everywhere. So uh, we'll come back when this is all ground up and uh, the base as well. Okay, and we're back. 
Um, this didn't take very long. Uh, I've still got a few little bits and bobs to do, and I've got some with paint stripper, just in like the awkward, uh, awkward places like the corners of things where I couldn't get in. So to do this, I used two things. One was this uh, Abrax poly disc, and the other one was the wire brush. I'll just do a very, very quick brief review of this. Um, it is amazing and awful at the same time. Uh, it's amazing that um, it did the job that it was designed to do. It took off the paint very, very well. Um, there were no sparks from this. There was no digging in. There's no damage at all to the steel. In fact, it's left a, a very, very nice um, surface finish. Um, as you can see from the video of this, it did the job pretty fantastic. Um, as well as looking at this piece, which is cast. Uh, you, I'm hoping you can see that okay. You'll see the original grinding marks that was done in the factory. Um, they have still stayed there, whilst this has taken the top layer of paint off. And any ingress that you can see from the casting defects has still stayed there. Um, the downside to this, I've never used an angle grinder with an attachment on it that's vibrated as much as this. Uh, so much so that I did a full one of these and had to stop um, because my little finger dislocated from the vibration that much and that has never happened to me before. Um, you know, I'm not a snowflake. I've, you know, I've had many, many eight hour shifts of me pretty much using a four and a half inch and nine inch grinder, you know, throughout the whole of the time using wire wheels, using stone discs, using flat discs everything and it's never phased me before um you know I, i've used an angle grinder for my job um you know i'm <laughs> what i'm trying to say here is that it is amazing at doing its job um but the vibration was pretty horrific um and when i actually put this on i thought i'd put it on wrong because as soon as i actually put it on the disc i don't know if you can see that okay but it's actually, from grinding it down, the blue disc was off center. Um, and I think that's kind of how it's worn out so much. Now, I, I kind of don't know what the expectations were going into this. Because, you know, I've never used one of these. I don't know if that's good. I've pretty much completely used it down to where I can't use it anymore. Um, it's it's done its job, but you know this was roughly seven pounds for one disc to do effectively what a wire brush could have done in probably twice the time. Twice the time, you know. To, it, it's kind of one of those things. How valuable is your time over using something that's probably not the best suited for its job? Um, I will use these again because you know this hasn't damaged the lathe ways at all. In fact, it's you know it's it's cleaned them up fantastically. There's still um, protruding marks on here. Uh, you know stuff like oh, this where it's been knocked. You know that is still there. You know that hasn't taken any material off at all. You know I've gone on the corners and I'm still able to take. A shaving off from a fingernail you know these ways are still sharp um, so from that point of view fantastic the vibration side of it is you've got to take a lot of breaks using this um, and you've got to be really really careful um, I used I did everything in roughly around 20 minutes with the wire brush for the awkward areas and with this for the you know the, the flat areas um, so yeah, fantastic, but you know, be careful with them and they are really expensive for what they are uh, and they do not last long. So that's my review, let's get back to the lathe. Okay, let's get back to the colour. <laughs> um, we're in very difficult times here, this was recorded in um, April of 2020. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into detail of this if you are watching this later in the future. We're in the coronavirus, blah, 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 blah. Things are very difficult to get hold of, including paint, which for me is a fantastic excuse not to paint it this colour, to be totally honest with you. Um, I really I can't stand this green. I can't, I can't stand it, and I'm going to do something that I am very much usually against, which is paint this a different colour. 
If you are restoring one of these and you do want the exact colour, the colour I found closest to it is dolphin green or applewood green. Um, this is one of the sources that I found. Uh, there's a picture of it here. Um, yeah, and, and I can't I can't paint such a nice looking machine dolphin. It's, it's just I can't no. So I am either going to paint this grey or cream. Um, which is kind of like the next advert. <laughs> next is a clothes shop here in uh, in Britain. Uh, so what we're going to do next? Um, I've still got some paint stripping to do. I'm going to leave all this for now. I'm trying to make these videos not as long, so I'll probably call that a wrap for this one um, because we've we've done quite a bit. The next one that we're going to be doing is going through the painting side of it. Um, the primering, the flattening between the primering, etc, etc, etc. Clean up of all the parts. Um, but when I say all the parts, probably not all of the attachments. Um, the tail stock and the uh, tool rest I will be doing. Uh, and then we'll probably start reassembling it in the next episode, including fitting the bearings, inspection of the shaft, and going from there. So... Thank you so much for watching. Um, please hit the like, leave a comment if you've got any questions. Keep them positive. You stay positive, and I'll see you next time.